Did you know there are four very significant gardens in the Bible? They include the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Gethsemane, the Garden of Golgotha, and the Garden of Heaven, or the Garden of God. Each garden is distinct in and of itself, and yet each one describes your position with Christ. Each garden also serves a particular role in God's eternal plan for mankind. The question is, in God's eternal plan, which, ga which garden do you find yourself in? Shall we sing together, I come to the garden alone. Before sin entered the world, God's creation was good. Genesis 3.8 tells us that the first man, Adam, walked with God in the cool of the day. Now, we don't know how long this fellowship took place, 
but it must have been sweet. There is something very special about walking with someone you love. Imagine walking with God, naming the animals, living in paradise, a garden of creation. Once men sinned, however, the relationship with God was broken. We always think how bad it must have been for the man, but what about God? What a heartbreak it must have been for him to be no longer able to associate with his creation in this way. From that point on, mankind was separated from God by sin. But God made a way to come back to him through the sun. Are you in the garden of sin? Do you feel like you can't break out of its grip? John 8.36 reads, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed.
This song is a bit different. It has this oriental sound. It's a Jewish song, a famous one. They're singing it very often, reminding them on a period of their history, a Jewish history, when they could not hear God. So this is the prayer for God to forgive their sin, to talk to them again. And uh, this song contains a lot of pain. It contains a lot of uh, the sense of lostness. And then in the end, you'll see the, also the hope that God will hear their voice, even though they can't see sometimes the proof around them, but he's still here. Avina Melkeno, our father. <clears throat> father the king. <laughs> Yeah. 
Anyone who travels, it can be a bittersweet time. There is usually the excitement of the events ahead, but we also have the hassle of getting there, and then there is the trauma of leaving loved ones behind. This is especially true when you don't know when you will be able to see them again. Children experience separation anxiety when their parents drop them off at daycare. Parents go through a very difficult time when their kids go away to college. It's the end of a season and tough to deal with. Father God and Jesus experienced a type of separation anxiety in the Garden of Gethsemane. Here we find Jesus agonizing. His tears are caused by the separation from the Father that he will soon experience at the cross. His suffering is so intense that he is sweating great drops of blood. While the disciples are sleeping, Jesus is praying to the Father, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus came to earth to reconcile man back to God. This was his focus, his passion. Nothing would deter him from going to the cross because it was prophesied in his word that the Messiah would be crucified and would rise again on the third day. Here, our Lord would pray to the Father one more time, 
before he would take on the judgment for all mankind. Christ alone paid this price for sin. He had the weight of the world pressed down upon him, crushing him until he bled from every pore. Are you in the garden of suffering? Are you suffering now? Whether it's sickness, financial, marital, loneliness, bitterness, or some kind of suffering, give it to God. What if we trust him with it? What if we come closer to him through prayer? What if we trust him to heal our pain? We preach and we talk and we sing about the cross very often, but this song tries to present the whole story of Christ from a different perspective, uh, through the eyes of a Roman soldier who is trying to nail, cross, nail Christ on a cross. And we'll see the drama that he is experiencing, guilty conscience and pressures. At the same time, when he saw Jesus' eyes, Jesus look. This look stayed in his uh, mind, forever etched upon his mind, and this, cha this look changed his life. His loving eyes on me As near his cross I stood And never till my dying breath Will I forget that look It seemed to charge me with his death Though not a word he spoke My conscience felt an and plunge me in despair I saw my sins his blood has bled and helped to nail him there but with a second look he said I freely oh forgive this blood is for your ransom paid I died that you might live Is the look of him who died, the lamb I crucified. And now my life will sing the praise of a pure atoning grace that looked on me and gladly took my place. Is that my sin displays for all the world to view? Such is the mystery of grace, it seals my pardon too. With pleasing grief and mourn for joy, my spirit now is filled that I should such love destroy, yet live by him I can. Oh, 
pure atoning grace that looked on me and gladly took my place. For every wretched upon my mind is the loop of him who died, the lamb I Looked on me and gladly took my place. John 19, 41 reads, Now, in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been lain. It's so fitting that our Lord would be laid to rest in a garden. He is our rest. Matthew 11:29 says, "Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls." How quiet and unassuming Jesus is at this moment. Our victorious king has just conquered sin and Satan and death at the cross. He is victorious. On the morning of the third day, the resurrection morning, Je Jesus is resurrected and then Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb, finds the stone rolled away with two angels standing by, and she proceeds to mistake the risen Christ for the gardener. But Jesus is alive, and death is conquered through him. Are you in the garden of victory? Do you know this victory in your life? To know Jesus and his word is victory. So let's take that victory and serve others. Share the good news of God's salvation with the people God puts in your daily life. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us.
I pray you'll be our eyes and watch us where we go and help us to be wise in times when we don't Every heart. 
It's the song that inspired our name, only because as a group we have been dealing with a lot of trials and a lot of tribulations, and for us it's always about looking to God and depending on Him to get us through. Um, and in the midst of it all, we've actually made it a point, even though when we don't want to, to give God total praise, even through the trials. So we hope that you are blessed by the song.
we have come full circle from the garden of creation and sin to the garden of suffering to the garden of victory and finally to the eternal garden. Revelation 2, 7 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The word paradise also means the garden of delight. The paradise of God is where there are no more tears and the city streets are paved with gold, like transparent glass. Now the curse of the fall is forgiven and all true believers can walk with Christ through all eternity. Are you walking as a citizen of heaven? Philippians 3.20 says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Walking in the four gardens is a picture of our walk through this life. We go from being born into sin to being redeemed by Christ to walking in victory and finally walking in heaven with Jesus. It is comforting to know we have a garden of delight awaiting us who believe in him. Shall we all stand and sing when we all get to heaven? the old heaven and old earth had disappeared. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying, or pain. For these things are gone forever. Lord, it would seem that you chose a garden to reveal your love for us. As we go from this place, full of anticipation and expectation, we look forward to a new earth that you will give us. And in that new earth, we will experience your presence. 
how amazing it will be to walk and talk with you in a garden, to be in your company. Until that day comes, Lord, help us to remain faithful to you. In Jesus' name we pray.